Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sew Sew Lounge. Today I'm going to teach you how to sew a knit neckband. Now, because we're using knit fabric, it stretches more than regular fabric. And because we are making a neckband and applying it to a round neckline, there's even more possibility to stretch things out. If you enjoy this video, be sure to click like underneath the video. Sew Sew Lounge is the place to learn to sew one pattern at a time. And today we're going to be using Simplicity 9011, which is a dress that I have previously made. So the first time I made it, I made it in version B, which is right here. And since this was one of the first times I've used knit fabric, I kind of stretched out the neckband. So when you look at the pattern, the neckline is supposed to be probably about at least an inch closer in to the actual neck. And this is kind of a more of a boat neck look than a crew neck, which is what the original design looks like it's supposed to be. Um, you can double check on the back when you actually look at the little garment illustrations, but to me, it looks like it should be a little bit closer in, um, not quite so stretched out, which is why I'm making this video because I am making the dress again and it's going to be in this um, green kind of mid-century modern print. And I'm gonna do another tutorial on how to sew a neckband using the stretch fabric to stretch it correctly and not stretch it out of whack like I did with my first dress. This go round, I'm making version D, which has the gathered sleeves down here. It's the short version with the gathered sleeves with cuffs. And to start, I have sewn the center back seam together and I have sewn the shoulder seams together and all of my seams are pressed open and they're ready to go. So the side seams are still open um, and we are starting at pattern instruction number five. Now I have everything cut out and I have my pattern piece marked. Now the only pattern piece in this pattern that has markings that need to be transferred from the pattern piece to the fabric is the neckband. And it's really important that you do this correctly because that's where I went wrong the first time. So when I first made this dress, I usually put markings on the inside of the garment. The problem is when you do that with this, then you can't see the dots that you need to line up with the shoulder seams. So that was my mistake number one. And this go round, I put the markings on the outside of the fabric so that once we fold the neckband, we'll have markings on both sides that we can see to match up and things are gonna go a lot better this time. So to get started, um, get to this step. And if you haven't been following along, you can head to this video and watch it and that'll get you to this point. It's um, easy to sew knit dress part one, which gets you to this stage. And then for more info on the neckband, watch this video. So come back here. We're starting with pattern instruction number five. Let's go in for a closer look. All right, so we are starting here at number five. And the first thing we need to do is to um, sew the neckband together and we are gonna do that and then we're gonna fold it and pin it. Now, when I was talking earlier about the marks to transfer, it's these little dots that are right here. And I have my neckband folded in half, so we're just gonna line up that half of the pattern. But you can see where you have the notches marked. Let me get this all smoothed out again because I grabbed it wrong. And then you just line your pattern piece up and then we want to make sure that these dots are marked on the outside of the fabric so that once we fold it in this step, the dots will be on the outside and we'll be able to see them and match everything correctly. The other thing to note is that when you have this pattern piece all lined up where it's supposed to be, there's the word stretch down here. Let me go in a little closer. Oops, that's the wrong way. There we go. So you can see how it says stretch here. And when I saw that the first time, I was like, oh, okay, we're gonna stretch it. No big deal, not a problem. But once we go to the actual um, 
instructions, it's really actually down here at seven where it's telling you how wide to stitch. So we're gonna stitch it three eighths of an inch and it says stretching the band to fit. So first time around when I pinned everything, cause we're matching the dots to the shoulder seams and that's gonna be between here and then we want the center back to be pinned. So we're gonna pin the sides and then we're gonna pin the center back at the center back seam of the dress to make sure it's all lined up. So what I did the first time was, let me zoom back out. I just stretched all of this and pinned it and then left it overnight and came back and finished recording the video. So that was bad idea number two because it just stretched overnight and just sat there and hung out and stretched some more. We're gonna actually do the stretch part once we get to step number seven and start sewing. So we're not gonna stretch anything. We're just gonna pin it and then leave it kind of funny looking until we get to the stitching part because that's that's where I messed up. That's the second time I messed up. First one was not putting the marks on the right spot. So let's head over to the sewing machine and we are going to sew this together and make it look like that and then we will press. So before you start sewing, make sure that you have changed out your needle from whatever needle you've been using to a ballpoint or jersey or knit needle. Um, sometimes it's also labeled as a stretch needle just depending on what type of needle you're buying, what brand you're buying. They all say something a little bit different, but it's all good for knit fabric. Next, you wanna make sure that your sewing machine is set to a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch. Test out a variety of stitches with your fabric to make sure you have the right length and width that's gonna work the best for the fabric you're using. I'm gonna be using a zigzag stitch because the stretch stitch on my machine is a little too bulky for this basic kind of jersey knit. It'd probably be better for a sweater knit. So get your machine set to where you need it to be. Um, my machine is at a two and a half length and it is at a three width and that is just what I need for this lightweight jersey. I'm also using a size 70 um, ballpoint needle. So that's a thinner ballpoint needle. They come in a variety of ranges. So 80 would be a little thicker, 90 would be thickest. Um, kind of whatever fabric you're using, just plan accordingly. So one thing to keep in mind before we start sewing is you have marked the dots on the outside of your neckband. So those are gonna be on the right side of the fabric. So to sew this together, we want to fold it so that the right side is on the inside. And we're just going to match up these two pieces um, with this little notch here. And then we're gonna be sewing along this edge at 5 eighths of an inch. Now, the reason we're doing this is because once we sew this, then we're gonna flip the neckband with the wrong sides together. And then you will have that dot on the outside, on the right side of your fabric to match up with a shoulder seam, which is what we need, where we need it to be. So I think this is what I messed up the first time I folded it the wrong way and then my dots were on the inside. So we're not gonna do that this time, um, but just to show you kind of where we are, you want the dots to be on the inside of the neckband when you sew this little side seam to connect the loop. And because the pattern does not specify, we are going to be sewing at 5 eighths of an inch and just using our usual zigzag stick, make sure that all of your notches are matched up um, just so that once you flip everything, they'll still be lined up. We're gonna line up at 5 eighths of an inch and then we are just going to sew using our zigzag stitch. I'm gonna do one little back stitch just to kind of hold it in place since we are gonna be playing with this later. And then I'm just going to sew down and do one back stitch and finish. So now that we have this sewn, we are going to press the seam open, fold the neckband so the dots are visible, and then go on to the next step. Before you start any ironing or pressing, make sure you know your fiber content of your fabric. A lot of knits have lycra or nylon added into them to enhance their stretch capabilities and you need to have a lower heat setting on your iron if you're using one of those fabrics. Now the fabric I'm using is 100% cotton so I don't have to worry about that and I have my iron set to cotton. I am just going to press open that little seam that we just sewed real quick and just give it a little bit of steam. Let it cool. And then the next step on the pattern instructions are to fold the band 
wrong sides together. So we're gonna be folding the seam in half and then we're gonna just give it a quick press to hold everything in place and we're gonna pin it. Actually, I think I might throw a couple of pins in there real quick and that'll hold everything in place. Um, we're just going, I'm gonna start here at the center back seam because that's the chunkiest um, part of the neckband. And I wanna make sure that those notches on either side are in the right spot. I'm just gonna add some steam to make sure this holds. And then I'm just gonna go around the neckband. One thing also to keep in mind is make sure if you are using a pen, like a marking pen, that it is not heat sensitive and it will not vanish when you iron it. I am using a chalk pencil for these markings, so I don't have to worry about that, but this has happened in the past where I've used a um, heat pen and then as soon as you iron everything, all your marks disappear, which is problematic since we need to line everything up and that's why we have put the markings on the outside of the neckband. So once everything is lined up and folded and pressed, then we're ready to move on to the next step. We're now to step number six of the pattern instructions and we are going to be pinning the neckband to the outside of the garment and we're going to start at the center back seam because that's gonna be the easiest point to start with. So just match up the seam from the neckband to the center back seam and make sure that all of those seam allowances are open so that when you go in and sew, everything's gonna be open. It's not going to be folded over and create additional bulk. It's already gonna be a little bit bulky um, just because of the nature of putting this together in this manner, but um, make sure they're not folded over. So once we have that folded, the next step is to go around and we want to match the dot that we marked to the shoulder seam. So we're gonna just match that and we're gonna put a pin in there. And this is so much easier to do when you have the dot on the outside of your neckband so you can actually see it. And once again, I'm gonna make sure that these seam allowances are pinned open. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm not stretching, so it's gonna look a little funny. It's not gonna be connected. See how that looks? But let's go in for a closer look. So here we are at step six. We are pinning on the outside and we are matching up the center back seam of the dress to the center back seam of the neckline. And then we're gonna match the dots on each of those shoulder seams. So, so far we have pinned the center back and open those seams so that it's it's easy to um, flatten out. Well, as best as we can, it's flattened out. And then we have gone over to one shoulder. We have placed the dot on that shoulder seam, as you can see, and then we have pinned open those seam allowances. I'm actually gonna pin it on this side. That's a little bit better. So I have my dot, it's on the seam, and now we're gonna go around to the other side Flip your neckband and make sure you don't twist it because then that kind of defeats the whole purpose. And we're over at the other shoulder. I'm going to match up the dot over here as well on this shoulder. And this is so much easier to do when these markings are on the outside and you don't have to worry about it because they'll wash out later or you can just use a damp cloth. And we're going to grab another pin that's matched up here. And then we're gonna put in a pin to just keep those raw edges together. I can take this pin out, but you can see how there's kind of like a gap there. So what we're eventually gonna do is stretch this to fit that, this piece that's bigger, but we're not there yet. So let's move around to the front and we're gonna match up these. So this will all fit on this front side because it's cut without having the additional stretch. So we're only gonna be stretching on the back so just make sure as you pin, you're not pulling any of this and you just wanna put your pins in. And once you get everything pinned into place, then we will go on to the next step. So one thing that the instruction does not tell you that you need to do at this point in time is to change the stitch setting on your machine. So. I'm switching over to a straight stitch because if you sew this with a zigzag stitch, it's not gonna turn quite as easily. It's gonna be a lot harder to do. You need a really, really, really narrow zigzag stitch. 
And you can sew this on a straight stitch without any problems because it's not gonna be super stretchy and it probably will help it a little bit. So check your fabric. I'm going to be sewing a straight stitch at a three length. Um, most of the time I sew at a two and a half, but I tested out with my fabric. Three is gonna be a little bit better. Um, it doesn't pull the fabric quite so tight. Um, it gives it a little bit of movement with that knit, which is what's gonna work the best. The other thing that you need to do, if you have a platform around your sewing machine or if you're sewing in a table like I am, you want to raise it up at this point so that your free arm is available because we are going to be sliding the, um, the neck hole over the free arm and then we're gonna be moving it around and it's a lot easier to sew when you have that free arm accessible instead of sewing flat in a table. So if you've got a little platform around your machine, take that off. If you have like a, you know, a case on the back with, you know, other presser feet and things like that, take that off. Um, make sure it's accessible because that will make everything so much easier. So to get started, we are going to start at that center back seam again. And then we are going to go around and we are going to stretch. So get everything lined up, get this all lined up and get your neckline around your free arm to facilitate this process and then smooth out the rest of your fabric along the table that you're sewing on. Um, this will make it a lot easier to get everything nice and smooth. And then once you start sewing, it's not gonna be a big old jumbled mess. Let's go in for a closer look. All right, to get started, we need to take note of the fact that this seam is going to be sewn at 3 eighths of an inch. So 3 eighths of an inch is just the first line past the presser foot. If you're sewing with a quarter inch presser foot, you can use a seam gauge to double check that. That's gonna be 3 eighths. And then I'm gonna line up my magnetic seam gauge along the edge just to help me stay on track as I sew. Now I'm gonna be starting on the shoulder seam because that is not the part we have to stretch. As mentioned earlier, this is the part where it all just is gonna line up and it's only being stretched between the shoulder seam and the back neck band um, or the center back. So we are just going to line this up and we're gonna start from this point because it's gonna be a little bit easier. So I have that dot on the shoulder seam where it's supposed to be. I have everything lined up. Make sure I get all my little fabric pieces all good to go. Make sure that's in there right. There we go. Okay. So you want all your raw edges lined up. We're lining them up with that 3 eighths of an inch and then we're gonna start stitching. And let me make sure my machine is on the correct setting. Yes, straight stitch, add a three, and we're gonna start. So you just need to sew. You do not need to pull at this part. You're just kind of holding it and letting the machine do the work and feed everything through and remove each pin as you get to it. So now we're coming around to the shoulder seam. You can see that the dot is lined up with that shoulder seam. Just straighten that all out. And now this is the part where we're going to need to stretch. Let me zoom out a little bit. Oh, there we go. So this is the part we're gonna to need to stretch because you can see how those are not connected. They do not um, match up like we did around the front between the shoulders across the front part of the dress. So now we need to start the stretching process like it was indicated on the um, on the pattern piece where it said stretch. So that's what we're gonna do through here. Just pull gently, don't go crazy, just so that everything lines up. And then just keep stitching at 3 eighths of an inch. And remember we have it pinned here because that was the next point. So you do not need to stretch it past that point. I'm gonna pull out these pins and we're gonna keep going. And then remember we need to stretch this next part down here. So as you're coming across the seam allowance, take your time, it's a little chunky. And then we are going to continue to stretch the other part to, until we get to the other shoulder seam. And we're just coming back around to that other shoulder seam. I'm just gonna stitch over my stitch line back up twice and then I'm going to pull out my needle. 
So now you can see we've got this first stitch line. Eventually what we're gonna do is fold that in. Um, but next, so now we're going in a second time on the inside of the seam line here at a quarter of an inch. So we wanna line up the edge of the presser foot with the edge of the fabric. Now, if your presser foot is not a quarter of an inch, then you probably need to measure. Um, but mine is, so I'm just going to line that up and get going and we're just making a second stitch line next to the first. As we go around, this is just kind of added uh, reinforcement. And we're just coming back around. You lift that up. So now you should have two stitch lines. And next we're gonna go back and press with the iron, we're gonna press that down towards, and then we are going to do a top stitch along this edge. So we're back at the ironing board, and this time we want to press the neck band, um, that seam we just sewed to attach the neck band to the neck line, and we wanna press the seam allowance down towards the body of the dress. So we've got the dress here, we're gonna go back in and do some top stitching from the front side of the garment. And we wanna make sure that that seam allowances is folded down towards the, like towards going down towards the waist so that when we top stitch, it'll catch and then you'll have a nice finished edge. And it's just gonna be more secure once you actually get around to washing this. So the easiest way to press this is to just flip your dress to the inside out and move down to the end of your ironing board um, that is tapered. And we're just going to press this down. So we're pressing the seam allowance towards the waist. Make sure your iron setting is correct for your fiber type. And then we're just gonna apply some steam and just go around this really easily. Let it cool for a second before you move it. And then I'm gonna go this way. Just flip it out and press. This is going to be the last go round of the neck band so that we can secure this part of the neck band to the garment. And the instructions on the pattern indicate that we need to sew close to the neckline neck band seam. So I have my presser foot lined up so that this seam is gonna be about at the 1 8 inch mark. I'm just gonna kind of feed it and line it up with um, that line on my presser foot and just kind of feed it all together. And I'm gonna roll my needle down to get started. I am starting at the center back seam this time. It's kind of a chunky seam, so I kind of wanna start there and get moving forward. And we're still sewing on a straight stitch. So just follow that edge around. And now I'm just coming back around to that center back seam. And we are going to be finished. So we have that all stitched, insides all stitched, and let's go take a look at it on the dress form. Ta-da! So this is the finished neck band and it did move closer to the actual neck. So it's moved about three quarters of an inch from the original dress that I first sewed um, and really stretched out the neck band. This is much better. And following along with these steps, you're going to have success sewing a neck band and knowing when to stretch and when not to stretch makes all the difference in the world. Now, if you want to keep sewing this video, you can click the link above and that will take you to part two of sewing the dress where you'll sew the side seams and the hem and the sleeves if you're making version B, A or B, because that's the same sleeve. But stay tuned for more videos featuring Simplicity 9011 and we are going to um, gather this sleeve and then we are going to add a cuff. So that will be coming up soon. Keep an eye out for that. And until we meet again, happy sewing. Music